Good afternoon everybody. So today our project is actually tuning our duplexers. So Sue and I are both amateur radio re uh, operators, ham radio operators if you will. Um, we have on our site a 220 megahertz repeater here for local coverage. We use it to talk to friends when we're riding around into town or whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through how to do that using the Rigol DSA815 spectrum analyzer with tracking generator. We've got a block diagram. We're going to explain what's actually happening for those that aren't familiar with repeaters and the process. So when we get into our block diagram here, we have our repeater, which is basically two radios. It's a transmit radio and a listening radio. We have our duplex filters, duplexers, which we have right here. We'll explain those in a little more in detail. Now we have a single piece of feed line, coax, antenna cable, going up to an antenna on the tower. Single antenna. So what's happening with the repeater is that when you key up your radio to talk into my repeater, your radio transmits on 223.24, goes out through the airwaves, my antenna hears it, which is represented by green, comes down the feed line through two of the duplexers and into the repeater. The repeater sees that signal and immediately keys up and retransmits it almost exactly simultaneously. It's maybe a couple hundredths of a second delay just going through the audio in here. So as you're talking into the repeater and saying whatever you're saying, the repeater is actually transmitting it back out the red line through its own du other two duplexers and up to the antenna and back out into the air. So if I've got two radios side by side, I key this one up, it transmits out to my repeater on 223.24. The other one is listening on 224.84. That's called a split in amateur radio repeater world. So what's happening, if you didn't have these duplexers, of course, as soon as that signal come down to the repeater, the repeater would key up and transmit on that 10 to 15, 25 watts, however much power your repeater is putting out. Ours is doing about 15, and that power going out would actually just drown out the signal coming in. So a radio signal is voltage at its core. It's basically a voltage signal. And if you've got, like, say, one microvolt coming down the, the line and then you send say you know five volts up the line and these numbers aren't accurate I'm just I'm just giving you an example the five volts would just drown out the, the microvolt right so the duplexers actually work to keep that from happening so what happens is on these green duplexers over here if you can see like this this line is is acceptable right this line is everything is going out there's no filtration same thing over here. What they're going to do is they're going to put a big notch like that right at the transmit frequency. So they're going out at the listening, I'm sorry, not going out. It's listening into the repeater at 22324, but right at that 22484, it puts a huge filter notch so that it, it ignores that, that, that that block is just gone, doesn't even transmit through. And then on the transmit side, going out, we do basically the same thing, and that's going out to the antenna, but it would be at the 223.24. So what they're doing is they're essentially keeping each signal from each other and sharing the same antenna. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's a whole lot of videos on explaining that more in depth. I just wanted to give you a brief primer on what's happening. So then as we move into the actual duplexers over here, these can be, these can look different depending on what brand they are, what frequency you are. On 220 megahertz, we have a big spread. So we can get away with four of these. On 440, we have a big spread. On two meters, it's a lot narrower spread because the, the band is so busy. So we end up usually having six of these. And two of these, like these two here, are the low pass and the back two are the high pass. So what we've done is we've connected our Rigol. We have our generator output on our Rigol feeding into the antenna T on the cans. Now, if this is your first time tuning the cans, if they were way off frequency, you can take each can apart and you can go right across the T on the can and program just that one, I mean, you know, tune just that one can. Where these have already been working, 
we're going to do it as a whole. So if you were doing one can at a time, you do one can for your low pass, your next can for your low pass, same with your high passes, and then you would assemble it like this and you still want to tune it because there's going to be variables in all the feed lines here, which are cut to length for your frequency, by the way. And we have a dummy load on the other side of the high pass. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the Rigol going. So we'll zoom in on this so you can see this real well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up our frequency. So we're going to push frequency and we want to set our setter frequency. So that's highlighted blue. And we're going to set it for our repeater frequency, 224.840 megahertz. Now we want to do a span. And we're going to do about 20 megahertz. And we can, we'll, we'll tune this in as we go. So now we've got it set up to listen in the area that we're working in with our repeater. We need to go ahead and turn on the tracking generator. We're going to set the level to 0 dB for now. And then we're going to turn it on. So now, I'm not sure if you can see that real well, but this is the dip I was talking about before. So we're on our low pass, which should be dipping out the 224.84. So we're going to click our marker button, and we're going to put a marker right in the low part of that. And you'll see I'm at 224.773. So I'm going to set that marker for 224.84 megahertz. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this much, the resolution much higher. So we're going to go to span, go 5 megahertz. Okay, so now you can see we're really dialed in on that. And I don't know if you can see the one bouncing around on the screen there. We'll see if we can get you zoomed way in. So you'll see this bottom of this dip is quite like hairy and bouncing around a little bit. We actually want to try to get that down as far as we can and pointy as much as we can. So we're going to play with that in just a minute. All right, so we've set up our tracking generator. We have two markers. So we're on our low pass. So this is the cans that are coming in to the repeater listening for you to transmit on your radio. So we've got two things we're looking at here. Um, Marker 2 up here is how well it's going to listen to the frequency coming in and marker 1 is how well it's going to reject the uh, transmitting signal. So we're going to go ahead and span out on this a little bit just so you can see what we're looking at. Um, there's a better example of it. So the top, the very top up here, this white line right at the very top is zero filtration. That's wide open pipe. Down at the bottom is absolute filtration. Nothing is getting through. So what we're doing is we're trying to keep out everything except for the inbound signal that you're transmitting to the repeater. And we're really trying to reject what the repeater is transmitting itself. So that's why you see that. That, that rise up in, in quick fall. That marker 2 up there is what it's listening to. So I'm going to go ahead and span back in. So our goal is, is to make that marker 2 as high as we can and as narrow as we can. So by clicking on marker again, and we select marker 2 right here, you'll see that I've got 2.19 dB of loss coming in. And then if I click on marker 1, you'll see I've got almost 80 dB of rejection. So now what we do to, to do this, um, we're going to pan up to these duplexers here. And we're going to show you what we're doing. All right, so on the duplexers, we have two adjustments that we're going to mess with. The rod right here moves the whole frequency. So if you watch, I'm going to, I'm going to loosen one up. And you always want to hold your rod while you loosen the jam nut. And then as I turn that rod, you're going to see everything move back and forth. You see how it goes to the right on the screen of the... And you'll see, you'll start to see we're getting two humps, and that's because we're doing both at the same time. So I'm going to bring that back. And then there's also a little capacitor down in here that takes a regular screwdriver, and that separates the two notches from each other. So as you saw by turning the rod, both notches go equally. The capacitor will actually move the notches closer together or farther apart. So as I turn that, see how that's coming up towards that one? And see how it's going down towards that one? So this is our goal. So 
We know that we're about the best place we can be on the rods. We're going to go ahead and, and put that one right there. We're going to loosen the other one. I think a grill will tighten that one. Turn this rod to see if we can make that top notch. So we're going to change our marker to two so we can see what we've got. At 2.4. And you'll see it says calibrating. It stops working while it's doing that. So we're trying to make that number as small as possible. Okay, so we're going the other way. That's 2.19. Going the wrong way. That's probably about as good as we're going to get on that one. So we're going to lock those down and make sure that it doesn't change too much. It will change some. There's not much you can do. You can counteract it. Alright, so we're good there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change to marker 1. And we're going to zoom in on that some more by going span 2 megahertz. Okay, so now we're going to try to make that as narrow and as deep as we can with these two capacitors. And very finite adjustments make a big difference here. And you see we're at negative 90 dB of rejection. Find the screw again. And we're probably going to call that good on that side. So we're going to span back out so you see what we did. All right, so you can see here what we've done. We've got our pass frequency at the top, and we're losing 2.15 dB of signal coming in. And we've got our reject frequency down bottom, which will go to marker 1. And we've got around 85 dB of rejection. So we're pretty happy with that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the other side of the cans now. Um, we'll probably just fast forward through that one so you can see what we're doing. And then we'll come back and recap. So hold on while we get that set up. All right, so now we're set up on the other side on the high pass, or in this case the transmit ones. And you'll notice it just reverse imaged itself. So we have our rejection down here and our pass up here. So on our pass we have negative 1.87 dB of rejection probably not going to do a lot better than that. And if we go to marker and we go to marker 2, you'll see we're rejecting about 80 dB of the uh, rejection side. So I think we're going to leave that alone. I think we're happy with the transmit side. Um, there was really no issue here anyways. We just like to check this every couple of years. The repeater was working pretty well. As you saw, we made some very minor adjustments. So 
that's pretty much it for this. We're going to go ahead and get the repeater back on the air and make sure it's working correctly. Um, we will probably check the reflected power of the antenna, which will be another video. Um, any questions on the Rigol or duplexers or amateur radio, you know, don't be afraid to leave them down below. We'll do the best we can. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.